Uh, well, good morning. I've been told it's time to get started, so I'd like to welcome you to uh, the next uh, session. This is Managing Your Online Presence from Access Info to Purposeful. My name is Marcia Dory Baker, and I work at Schmidt Law Library, which is the University of Nebraska College of Law on this campus, for you who are familiar with Lincoln. Um, and our panel is going to introduce themselves, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, any questions that you have, please raise your hands. Um, we're going to be migrating between a table and the podium for the mic. So if um, you're raising your hand, raise it high and wave. <laughs> so we know, and we'll get your question. And we'll also be repeating the questions um, because this is being live streamed. That way the audience uh, remotely can hear it too. So um, I'd like to say welcome, and we're going to do introductions now. My name is Becky Weimer. And I am the systems librarian at Bellevue University. Um, a little bit about my own online presence, which we're going to take a look at in uh, a few moments, is that if I had to give myself a grade, I, I was thinking reaction-wise, I would give myself a C minus. But then when I really got analyzing myself, I probably deserve like a D minus. Uh, I kind of let my online uh, presence happen. Which is what the motivation for this this session was, is if we're not careful, we really need our, our presence will happen to us, and it doesn't present exactly what we're hoping for. So we'll go into that more, but I am going to do my Good morning. My name is Alex Knight. I'm the librarian at North Star High School in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, my online presence is fairly recent, and that was because our director in Lincoln had suggested we be careful about putting things, for example, on Facebook and other places, and things can be manipulated and we not know about it, and my grade might be a C minus because I wasn't really watching for things, um, and so I'm a recent addition to Facebook, and I keep a lot of the things private. But then in my library, I have to watch for our students, making sure that they're safe online and they're not trying to crack into things, you know, how smart they are because they can get into things. And I don't know how because they're smarter than I am on that. So um, I needed to learn a lot more, too, about my own presence, but also make sure that I'm protecting theirs. Okay. Um, managing my online presence, I am... Um, I think I probably give, uh, professionally, I would give myself about a B because I am very active um, within my profession and within the library world and I, I keep a close eye on what's out there. Um, personally, I don't participate as much and I guess I probably let that one kind of fall off the wayside so I'm probably going to see on that as well, um, which brings us into our, our next um, kind of question which is balancing your personal and your professional activities. Um, I do a lot of social media for my library, so I tend to post at Schmidt Law Library, so anything you see out there um, is me posting in my name. And so anytime I post it my own name professionally, you can find my business card on my door, I make sure it sounds, you know, it's, it's me, the, the professional, so I'm very aware of that. Um, otherwise, I kind of stay off. I'm a very private person. I don't want a lot of information out there. I do have Facebook, and that's probably the one area where I kind of merge the two, um, and I have to remember that, oh yeah, uh, my boss is a friend, my co-worker is a friend, and I also have family around the world that are friends and they can see what I'm doing. And so the privacy settings are um, important that way. Um, and that does, uh, for me personally, restrict what I post, um, in particular my pictures, and um, snarky comments that if you're missing the facial um, expression that goes with that comment, uh, it doesn't make sense or it, it, odd. So um, I guess always in the back of my head I have that who am I posting as I feel like I have two personalities. <laughs> and uh, I think that's probably uh, a little paranoia or that might be um, just being practical. I haven't decided yet. I do have a Facebook account and um, I think of it as a category of Facebook people I would be considered a marker um, because I kind of watch the horizon but I don't post very often. And a lot of that is because of the conflict uh, between the personal and the private. Um, just not wanting to offend anyone, I don't post at all. But 
in the professional realm, that's not very helpful. And if you're part of my family, they don't think that's very helpful either if I just never post and then they know nothing. Um, in some of my readings um, on this topic, it's really suggested that um, you create networks with your, your online. Um, you have a professional persona and you have a, a private persona. And they even go so far as to um, suggest that you make your account separate so that there isn't the overlap and then, then it also helps minimize that fear factor. So then you can actually um, post and um, participate. Because one of the reasons that we are looking at this online presence, um, especially in social media, is so that we can support and network with each other. And if all we're doing is watching the more comfortable and this medium people post, um, our voice isn't being heard. And so um, I think what I'm going to be looking at is looking at all of those uh, security matters in Facebook, creating my networks, and then deciding what my purpose is. Why do I want to do this? It isn't shameless self-promotion. And if you've ever had certain friends on Facebook, and all you think is that postings are shameless self-promotion, um, I was really helped in some of the literature in thinking that um, what I need to do is shift from, it's not promotion, but I'm actually trying to do something or share things that will benefit my network. Whatever network that is, it could be a school, it could be uh, alumni, it could be um, just my professional friends. Am I posting something that can help them? And that's going to be my motivation over just getting my voice out. Uh, that brings to mind uh, working with the students in the library. I would like to have things out there that promotes the library, reading, coming in, doing research. Uh, I consider my library, for example, everybody's dining room table, which can be used for so many things. Um, I have to keep it a safe dining room table. And so uh, in Lincoln, the district technology folks, the computer folks, they block access to Facebook, and there's many other sites that are blocked. Teachers, if they need students to get something on, off of YouTube, for example, they could log in and get through the restricted access with their password and ID and get something that is of academic value that with their students, um, but for example, not, not Facebook. For my own use, like I said, I'm fairly recent using Facebook. I decided that I could do some, some private things, so I'm online with some friends. It happens to be with dog training. And then, like Facebook is wont to do, you get a flood of things anyway. They just recently changed some things where you can, you can put things on private, but there's a, like a wall, a backlog of, oh, here's stuff from before and before and before. And before. So when we talk to our students about using things, they're not being able to use Facebook at school, but if they're at home or at the city library, we talk about if you put it there, it's everywhere. And it's always going to be everywhere. So we try to, to do a balance. And I, in my own private life and then public life, try to do a, a balance. We do use Edmodo for a lot of things and that can be helpful with the students. Uh, kids know about Pinterest, for example. That's easy. They Google a lot. So there are a lot of social media things that they could use um, at school and then continue out of school. But the message is always to be safe about it. You know, um, It's just like language face to face. You're not going to be sexist, racist, etc. Ageist, nothing, no. It's the same thing online. Um, and thinking as everybody's talking and, and getting ready for this presentation, one of the things that came out, and we're going to um, talk about best practices in a few minutes, but one of the things that came out um, in the readings that I ran across was the idea that um, you need to manage your online presence before somebody else does it for you. And I think there's been enough um, articles in the news, both traditional prints and, and TV and online, about um, 
young people being bullied, making comments online, um, how things can turn very quickly. You have the herd mentality online because you're not actually seeing the person you're hurting. And we've lost a lot of young people and, and old people as well and everybody in between because of it. Um, and so managing who you are online is just as important as managing who we are in this room. Um, you're not going to see any of us get up and start dancing on the tables and, and you know, get crazy because, well, for one, we have a webcam and we know that this is James yeah. Street. So that right there is kind of like, okay, everybody's in there. Um, I didn't know that when I signed up for this. Um, and two, you know, you're all my peers. Um, some of you I know and I see all the time. Hey, guys, how's it going? Others I have never met you and I want you to think that I am professional, but I am. Um, and so the same thing we need to we need to be doing online with our presence. Yes, we put the party pictures there. We all know what happens in Vegas does not stay in Vegas, no matter how um, titled you are. And so we need to be treating ourselves with that respect and saying, this is who I am. This is what I do. These are the people that I know or I will be knowing soon because we're all friends. We just haven't met before. Um, and treat that um, treat ourselves with that respect. If we have not, then things are going to be out there that we cannot control. And we know that once it goes on, online, you really can't get rid of it. And, and we don't want to be trying to clean up. We want to be uh, managing and promoting who we are, who our libraries help, and what we can do, the services that we can provide to our communities. And there's nothing like a disgraced um, individual to you know, you kind of screw it at that point. Um, and, and when we are using these features, we can be helping our kids, our students, uh, the other people that we come in contact with being uh, maybe not the, the pioneers out there, um, but because we're actively doing it, it's the awareness factor and we can be helping other people do it and say, hey, here's how you can um, you know, make improvements or here's where you shouldn't be um, you know, putting all of your information and that kind of thing. Okay, so that being said, um, we're going to move into best practices. Uh, what you can be doing and um, what you should be aware of. Because I have so much work to do um, and the task seems so daunting to manage an online presence, one of my favorite articles that I ran across said that if you were going to do four things to um, either create or, or punch up your online presence, um, the three uh, softwares, the three things to participate in that are highly recommended are Facebook, because so many people are on it, Twitter, which I cringe, um, uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. The reason that, especially if we're talking professionally right now, the benefits of this is to, so that people know you then or more than just a name or a face at a conference. This, I think, if I was managing my um, persona much more carefully, think of sitting in a committee room trying to figure out a keynote for an upcoming conference that you're helping to plan. If people have this information, what their expertise are, what they've already presented on, if you could just look up that information and have it in one place, because we are presenting ourselves well, think of how much easier it would be to just have a guest speaker at a staff meeting or, or different aspects. So while my LinkedIn account is like two days old and some of you may actually have a request to be my friend in your inbox right now, um, that's one thing that I am personally going to build up. So if I have something to offer, people know what I have to offer and it's going to benefit all of us. Um, Twitter, my son twit, uh, twit, twit, <laughs> my son is a twit, no. Um, <laughs> he tweets, and that's just very, very much of, of his personality. I've always been rather hesitant to do it, but I'm seeing more of a benefit in the professional realm that what a great way, I'm going to this conference, let's get that out to my friends. Um, let's meet up, the kind of things that, that Twitter can be good for. It's just hitting a, a specific network and getting uh, information blasts out to them. Um, the other thing that was recommended, and I actually have an example um, that I'll show you of someone who, she says she didn't do it well, but I was really impressed. Um, Karen Daldil, 
uh, if you know her, she has created a really nice curriculum uh, Vita. And so you can go in and she has based the URL off of her name. So of course it comes up high in the search results. And you can go in and see um, her education, her interests, where she's presented, and everything about her in a nice and uh, condensed format. Now, when I asked permission if I could show that or promote that, her statement was, oh, I haven't updated it lately. Well, her update and my update are totally different levels. Um, but that is another key on best practices, is you need to keep it updated. Um, I was looking at other people's LinkedIn as I was becoming acquainted with them, because they want you to get to know them. And some people do a much better job of staying current. Um, the final best practice that I'll share with you is that if you have something out there from your past, if, or something that you are going to choose not to update, you did branch out, or you were an original MySpace and no one uses MySpace anymore, even except for Justin Timberlake. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's better to go to those sites to um, remove your content or to simply include a line, this information is all no longer updated, than to just leave it out there. And there are instructions um, out there that you can actually remove those accounts. And um, I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that in the cleanup stage that we're going to talk about. But if, if you're going to do it, you're gonna be, it's going to have to be a commitment. And if you have stuff out there, get rid of it if you don't want it to continue forever. I was amazed that some things can actually be removed as much as they ever are. At least they aren't currently in the Google searches. My guidance comes from both ALA and the American Association for School Librarians. Everything from scrubbing up your digital identity to how do you help students have a good face, if you will, on Facebook or whatever they choose to use. Um, I'm more of a proponent for LinkedIn. I like that. It's easy, simple. I'm kind of new at it. Uh, my Facebook is only about my dog training, and it's it's all private. Things keep filtering in, and you know, people say, "I know you. You like me. I know you do." Like no, I'm not going to like everybody. It doesn't impress me to click on something and have 2,000 friends. I don't know you face to face. I really like face to face. That's a little bit of how I talk to our kids. Like when you're here at school, and more and more we are discussing about not bullying, or if you see it, what do you do? You have to be able to deal with people face to face very kindly and respectfully, as well as digitally. Um, Another thought I had is, uh, how do you clean up some stuff? I had Googled a few months ago on my name, and it was kind of funny to see the stuff. If somebody else's name is even spelled like yours, and who are you? Um, I had published a poetry book several years ago, and now there's something online. I have no idea who this woman is attached to my book, which is out of print, out of date. I'm not sure how to get rid of that. The, the stuff hangs on forever, it seems like. There, I, I was looking to find out some information. There are places you can go online to, you have to pay them. Um, but for some of the oddities, they can clean up your digital identity. Or, like you were saying, use what MySpace has or some other place that shows you the instructions, how to go back and clean out the old stuff. I mean, it's, it's no different than an old metal file cabinet manila folders and throw that stuff away, you know, if you don't use that snow blower, if you sold it, throw it away, all the paperwork, yeah. Same kind of thing. It's hard, when I notice it's hard for kids to visualize that because it's out there in the ethernet. They don't relate to, okay, I don't have the snow blower anymore, I don't need the paperwork for it, throw it away, because they don't have file folders and stuff anymore, so it's hard to, for me to make those equations of, this is like this, you know. One of the things that I get some help from in the library, for example, is very often we host a career fair in the library. And the other day we had one, it was the whole day long, and we had so many folks from Lincoln in to talk to the kids, and they all dressed up and 
had practice interviews. And I was listening um, at the moment to somebody from the Army National Guard, and he said, watch what you're posting out there because your bosses can and will read what you post. You could A, post too much, and or B, post the wrong stuff. And I thought, wow. I, I hadn't heard anybody else in the, in the career fairs talk to the students like that about, you're out there, and you might be, you know, these, these kids are like 10th, 11th, 12th graders at the career fair. You need to be thinking about it now. During this practice interview, think about it now, because your future bosses, they're going to find you out there. Digitally, you want to be responsible and respectful. Uh, that brings up a conversation I was having with some of my coworkers. We were talking about the, the election, and well, we're all counting down that's going to be over here soon, but one of the things that came up was what happens in about three presidential elections when our current students are old enough to be running? And they have an entire digital life out there. That's going to be changing things. Um, and I think it's something that we need we need to be discussing. We discuss the birds and bees with our students. We need to be discussing their online presence and, and managing that. And that's part of the best practice thinking, OK, uh, and I know it's hard. I mean, it's hard for us now uh, as adults to be thinking about where we're going to be in 10 years or you know, uh, 15 years, that kind of thing. But, to help our students realize, like, hey, you know, someday I'm going to be an adult, I'm going to be in a job, and, and you know, people are going to be looking for me online. I mean, okay, raise your hand. How many of you at this conference have Googled somebody you saw or that you want to meet or somebody that, you know, is at this conference? How many of you guys have Googled somebody? Like, you know, because you're like, oh, I've seen that name. I wonder what they look like. That way I'm all going to go and find Okay, so we're doing it for ourselves. I mean, we need to be realizing that, you know, part of best practices is using what we're doing now and, and training them generation with that. Uh, one of the articles that I read in preparing for this was saying that we're not going to have CVs anymore. We're not going to have a resume that we send out to get a job when we apply for a job. We're not going to be asking for that. Um, instead, we're going to do something like LinkedIn as our resume. And if you're using LinkedIn, that's great. If you're not, please start using it because that's who you are professionally. Um, if you're using Twitter, you can add your Twitter uh, feed into that so people are seeing it. You can put your articles you're writing in there. They're available online. If you look um, at UNL, we put everything we can at our UNL Digital Commons. Um, so all of my articles, they're available online. I've got all the links to them within uh, LinkedIn so that people can see what I'm doing. They can go to the link. Our UNL Digital Commons is getting a download. People are able to see quickly what I'm publishing. Um, the one thing I don't like about LinkedIn is you can't put your presentations out there anymore. Um, but instead, you can talk about where your um, where you're active. And so you can have basically your personal bio um, or your professional bio, and you can put what you're doing. Um, if you work with somebody and they're really good and you want to recommend them, recommend them on LinkedIn. I mean, that is great when people are doing that because um, when you Google your name, and we'll show you some results here in a little bit, um, if your LinkedIn profile is not showing up on the first page, I would say within the first hit, I mean top three, then you need to be more active with LinkedIn and get your content out there. Uh, when I Google my name, the first thing that usually comes up is LinkedIn. The second thing is my faculty page at UNL. That's how I want it. And I can call myself on a fairly regular basis, not out of vanity searching, but to maintain that. Because I have people who contact me and say, hey, would you speak out of thing? I'm like, how the hell do you guys know about me? And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, if you're Googling my name and you're seeing that I'm at the law college and you're seeing all the things that I'm doing on LinkedIn, then it makes sense that maybe you contact me, even though I'm not aware of that out there. Um, so online is kind of invisible to us unless we're online, but it's still very alive and real. Um, so treat LinkedIn like your online resume. Like I said, you know, if, you can, if we could find people to be doing keynote presentations and staff training, easy, that would be great. And LinkedIn is now giving you the opportunity. You can also add basically tags to your name of the things that you're interested in. So library management, tech services, cataloging, um, social media, that kind of thing. So then as people are searching for people in the library world who have these interests, your name's going to start populating on a list. And you want to be on the short list. Um, that's a good place to be. Um, if you're feeling comfortable and you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, and you're LinkedIn, and you want to do something more, um, I, I do recommend that you Google Karen's um, name. She's got a nice website out there. It's her personal information. It's about who she is, what she does, her CVs out there. It's one of the top hits when it comes to her name. Um, if you like to blog, and you're blogging professionally as yourself, and, and get that content out there. Uh, keep it current. 
Um, you know, it's great if you signed up for the, the 23 things and you want to try something new. Um, but if you're not going to keep it active, um, please just uh, a friend and a, and a colleague delete it, remove it, or put, this was a great run, but it's over, it will not be updated. Um, because it's really hard. I Google everybody I hire. I hire uh, student workers all the time. And I'm Googling everybody left and right. And when I see all this kind of old content, um, I see things that are mm, a little questionable. It makes me think twice if I want to hire them because they're looking at the front desk. They're the first line um, when people walk into my library and ask a question if these students up there. And if they're making uh, questionable um, comments or they have outdated stuff online, I'm not sure I want that to be the first person somebody sees when they come into the library. We need to be thinking about that as well. Um, you know, this is a, a profession where we help people and we want to be better than Google. So we need to make sure we're the most helpful as possible. Um, so I think for me, best practice is, is being consistent, um, being proactive. Don't let the internet write your history for you. Um, be the person out there taking care of you and your library and your colleagues. And the other thing is, if you see something out there that you think is kind of weird, or you see somebody like, well, I didn't know you did that. What's up with that? Contact that person and just ask. They might not realize that there's things out there that they need to be aware of. Um, you know, and and it's, it's good to be you know, watching out for each other. Uh, we're in a small and uh, very active profession. As a little bit of a follow-up, um, one thing that Marcia and I noticed even uh, setting up my computer is that uh, don't forget that Google starts customizing to your online behavior. And so if you are continuously using your personal equipment to Google yourself, um, you're going to, the results are skewed. So what you're going to want to do is go to an anonymous computer every once in a while and Google yourself and see what the anonymous results are, because you will be amazed at, at the difference, especially if you're a frequent Googler. Um, the reason that we are also saying Google a lot is the statistics that I ran into said that about 80% of the people who are doing online searching for this type of thing are using Google. But it, they also suggested make sure that you hit some of the other uh, search engines, Bing, um, as well. Uh, to see what's happening in, in that world, because everyone will have a different presentation of, um, of you, and that should be a concern. So one more contact, uh, one more comment about those practices. Um, please, uh, professionally, try to be consistent with your headshot. Um, if you're at an institution where they take a professional photo of you every year, and that's on your page, uh, and do this for your library and your staff, um, use that same headshot. Um, same thing with the bio. I know we all talk about elevator pitches, and if your director, your dean walks in, or your, um, you know, city, county official, whatnot, you need to give them a quick blurb on who you are and what your library does. Do that for yourself online, and make sure that those all match. So on LinkedIn, whatever bio you have there, that should be the appropriate bio to need to introduce you at a conference or before a presentation. Um, have a one sentence blurb about you and make that available, but be consistent so it's off, uh, across all of the different uh, places where you are online. Because one, you're um, having better information out there about you, and two, you're being consistent so people are getting the same results over and over and over on you, and we know it is you. So that if somebody else has put their name on something that you created, you can put it and say, hey, I don't think that's the right alley. That must be somebody else, because all of your stuff is exactly the same. Now, that might sound really boring, and yeah, it is, but professionally, um, that's what you need to do. I mean, all of our business cards look the same. We um, are very um, clear in cataloging that everything is the same. So it makes sense as librarians that you know we should be consistent. But please do that. One more, if I could remember things in order, I would have to bounce back. Um, it also plays into your name. Use a consistent name. If you're going to use your middle initial, always use your middle initial, or never use your middle initial. Mm -hmm. Um, that might actually be one way to um, keep your, your personal and your professional different, um, is to adjust your name and, and make sure that you're consistent um, doing it with that. Also, when you're Googling um, some tips that I ran across, is I just throw my name out there and kind of see what happens. Um, Google yourself in different um, venues. Google your, your name and the the town that you grew up in. Um, if you're in a certain organization, Google yourself in that context. Different contexts. Don't do it just once and 
either scare yourself or be very pleased. Do it in multiple uh, contexts so you can see what, what's out there. Also, um, if you can, um, borrow someone else's, like Facebook account or LinkedIn, and search yourself and see if, when you're not in your profile, what other people are seeing. This is especially important in Facebook because the presentation can differ, if, especially if, um, depending on your security, um, what you're allowing them to see that first time. If it's so cut down, like mine is right now, um, that basically they get your headshot and your name, um, that's not very beneficial. Um, so see, see what the other people actually can see and what those settings that you've set are, are doing to the presentation. Um, okay, so you Googled yourself and you scared yourself and, and there's work to do, let's just say that. Um, we actually have our little points on our card on a PowerPoint that we will post and I'll include um, the citation to this if you want to. Um, but I ran across an excellent um, online article called Four Steps to Clean Up Your Online Presence. Um, in this, it actually includes the links. So if you're tr you've gone through and you found, oh, I had a MySpace, or in my case, I have a Twitter account. I didn't remember that until they sent me a reminder. Hey, I haven't heard from you for a while. I have a Twitter. Um, it actually includes links so that you can read through, oh, I need to clean this up, click to it, and it'll drop you into the instructions on how to clean it up. Um, but I love that. Something else in getting your, um, your hits higher um, within Google is one of the suggestions is um, go ahead and create an, a Google profile, which I didn't even know you could do. But if you go in, you have more control over what Google will do with your name and, and how it presents you. So um, that's something else that I would definitely uh, take a look at in, in my cleanup is how can I take control of the information out there? If there's something on a website that I don't like, I used to have the mentality of, well, what can I do? Um, but you can ask that webmaster to take that down. And most credible sites will have a contact with the webmaster and you can say, you know, this is obsolete, this is inappropriate, I didn't give permission for you to use this, and then you can request that it will come down. Google even has a, a way that you can protest or contest certain um, listings of your name, and then um, when you go through the process, they will remove that as well. Of course, if it's cached, if someone grabbed that picture and saved it on their hard drive, you have no control over that. Um, but there are becoming more and more tools where you can actually clean things up. Yeah, that's a, a good point. It reminds me about a lot of our teachers are using Google Docs because we have that now in the district. And so some of our folks who are a little bit more tech savvy will have the students work on profiles and stuff. Um, so that helps clean up because otherwise I, that's what I was learning about is that go to that site if it's credible, have somebody clean it up, say that's not me, I didn't post that, ooh, somebody else has the same spelling and this, what I see is not me, whatever, and have them help you get rid of it. Um, I always think of being proactive, like, like healthcare. So I'm really proactive with the students when they come in and we teach about going online to the databases. Um, I, my teachers support me in saying, don't just go to Google. <laughs> Try not to go to Google, bless their hearts. They will, but while I'm teaching and I have the LCD projector on, we're not going to Google. We're going to the databases we bought. Um, so, you know, you try to be proactive and leave them to the right place. You try to be proactive and say, if you're going to post this, think about it. Did you pause for a minute? Did you have a second thought? And don't post it. There's a clue right there for you, you know. 
that works with most of the students, bless their hearts. You know, if, you're, if you question it, don't put it out there. Okay? Whether it's a photo or the typing, whatever it is, you know, a lot of times that works for them, that helps. Uh, otherwise, as the librarian, I talk with my teachers and ask them, what are you doing? What's the assignment? How can I help? If it's anything that would be out there, including like using Edmodo, um, what do you want the students to write? What do you want them to say? And with Google Docs, and if they have them be able to send it to each other and work on each other's papers and stuff, we talk about that. You know, don't type on the side, man, this paper really sucks. Don't do that. It's out there now, you know. So you have to help them be, you have to be proactive when you help them. So even the, even that tiny little thing of using Google Docs and typing a paper to something, I'll say, more grand, like using Facebook, be proactive. You know, our personal um, work on, on the digital world and our students uh, in any school level, think ahead. I have just one thing to add uh, because cleaning up is going to take a lot of work, so you need to start earlier. Uh, don't wait until you're going to have a job interview and somebody Googles you. Um, but if you're using Facebook and LinkedIn, make, make sure you claim your username. Um, you may or may not know that you know, if you want to give somebody a URL to your profile in, um, in Facebook or LinkedIn, it would be you know, facebook.com slash whatever it is, um, claim that. Then nobody else can take it. If that's you, uh, my name is Dorothy Baker. Um, sometimes it's also uh, Marcia LDB. I try and keep the inventory maker uh, professionally and Marcia LDB personal. Uh, that's kind of the way I can remember which profile I am um, with all the different places that I, I am online. Um, but do that, um, especially um, especially if um, you know somebody has a very similar name to you. Um, make sure you're claiming that and, and be consistent, um, as I mentioned, with your name. Initial, um, use it. Um, when my daughter started uh, her Facebook account, you know, so there's people with a similar name and they had some questionable profile pictures. And so, um, you know, talking about it, she decided she was going to use her middle initial because it set her apart. Nobody else had that. Um, and so then now I'd like to follow it up with an article that was in the um, Sunday New York Times. I highly recommend you read it. I'm pretty sure it's Sunday. I'll double check that one. Um, anyhow, it was about um, Facebook and privacy, and there were um, a couple students, they're college students, that were out on Facebook um, inadvertently. They had very strict privacy settings. Um, they were very careful in what they did, uh, but they were added to an open group. And when you're added to a group, everybody knows that you've been added to the group. Um, and so this is just something to keep in mind as we're teaching our students and as we are maybe thinking, hey, I've got this great group. I'll just add people. Um, if you're adding people to things and they don't want to let well, everybody else know, even if you're excited about it, um, you might be damaging somebody's personal life. Um, and I think you know that's we need to tell our students for sure because they just don't realize it. Um, but the internet is out there; it's part of it. We participate in it. I mean, that's it's neither here nor now. It's just a man. It's, it's a it's time to manage what we're doing online. And as we're going from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0 and beyond, um, it's just an awareness factor um, and an education factor. And so um, it's kind of odd because I think when I was in high school, we didn't want anybody to know what we were doing and cameras were not allowed. And we were never, yeah, I mean, we probably be keeping somebody's house or something. But um, it, it was really different than now. Everybody wants to capture the moment forever. And they don't realize that forever is forever online. Um, so yeah, brave the world, I guess it's probably appropriate. Somebody thought about you know putting a dog with chihuahua and stuff. It made me think of students. Some of the projects teachers do, uh, the students are able to, if they want, create an avatar. Um, and I talked to somebody about that, being a little careful. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hair and like dog spike chains around the neck, kind of thing, and and the rest of the body and the face was mostly zombie-like and kind of like, disgusting. Not good because again. That avatar is not you, but it's out there now, and it could be out there for a long, long time, if not forever. And you don't want other folks to see that. It's not always appropriate. So you even have to think about that. The digital world is just astounding to me because, yeah, I'm, I'm from a world where, you know, all of our work was on paper 
kept in the little folders and now it's different and, and it will last longer, much, much longer than, than paper. So even avatars, you have, you have to have kids think about, I don't know so much folks our age, but at least our students. If you want to look at other things that are out there online, see some more resources, I know we all have resources and we'll get them available. Um, the kind of trending was their social media presence, if you would do a search for that. Um, if you're looking to uh, hire somebody to clean up your presence, please don't. Do it on your own first, see what you can manage, if there's going to take money. Um, but anyhow, if you're looking for that buzzword, it's online reputation management. Um, if you do the first search, social media presence, you're going to find a lot of really good marketing and promotion tips out there. Um, especially for people who are entering the workforce, if you're trying to get a job, you're doing your first interview, that kind of thing. What you need to be aware of, a lot of them are from universities. They're targeting their students to help them make sure that their online um, presence is, is employment ready. Um, you also find some other libraries and librarians who are giving similar talks and presentations, um, and that's out there. And then you're going to find um, marketing um, companies that have this type of uh, article out there for people who want to start writing, you want to start um, blogging, you want to become a professional online, what you need to be aware of. Um, but that's out there. Um, and there's some really good resources and some really current. Um, there's also some stuff from like uh, 2007 and 8. So this isn't a brand new topic. People have been thinking about it a while. Um, and like anything else, it's finally something where like, oh yeah, we need to take care of what's being out there. Marcy is going to um, show us some Google searches. Okay. And then we'll check the computer also came up. Okay, well, while we're doing technical stuff, does anybody have any questions while we get everything warmed up and, and ready to go? Yes? Yes, ma'am. I was just going to ask you about, I thought advantage of a really big so now I know Google our names, our like our entire names, when we got married, where we got married, our kids' full names, the whole entire thing. Is there anything I can do about that? Uh, <laughs> okay, so the question was, um, you have the family members in the genealogy, I have the family members. And so when you Google your name, you're seeing your whole family history, you know, full names, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know if you can do anything or not because there's one where I had a, a very proactive family member who put the wrong birthday and they didn't include my brother. And when I told my mom, she's like, well, someday I don't want to include your brother. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, you know, depending on the genealogy site, there's some privacy settings, but a lot of that because so many people are trying to do genealogy, they feel like it's a good thing. Yeah. If you're still alive, you might not think so. So I don't know what to tell you about. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, it's just Kind of weird to see that. Yeah. I would, I would, if you can contact that person, I'd tell them because many of the genealogy sites that they can be posting on have ways that living people can be blocked. So they can still have that information in their database, but the, the fact that you're still alive blocks it so it doesn't go out to other people and things like that. So I would talk to that person and tell them that you're. Okay, we have just a few minutes left. Yes, ma'am. One uh, feature for it was to sort of search. What do they use? Do they just Google? Or? I think most people, because it's free, you just Google them. And really, I mean, anything you can get on, I mean, most things you can get online for free. If you want to pay the money, you could get a, um, you know, a arrest record, a public record, that kind of thing. Probably most people are just doing a free search. I, and I guess that's something that um, future administrators need to think about. Okay, we're going to start hiring a whole group of people who have an online presence. What is appropriate for somebody we're going to hire and what is not? They're opening these sounds up for a lot of trouble, too. Yeah. Yes. Because my name, I know there's at least two others, two other people with the same name, same spelling, in this country at the same time as well as other people who are deceased. Yeah, I don't know their ages, where they live, etc. I don't know if they have 
the less correctly the seven. If one of them does, and they think that person is me, and I don't get a job because of that. That's something that the courts are going to be having to handle about 10 years because they're kind of behind in technology. But that, that is an issue. I mean, it is, because there's a lot of people with similar names. OK, real quick, I'm going to show you uh, the search results for Becky. She Googled her name as Becky Weimer. She's also known as Rebecca. And so depending upon how you search for her, uh, she's got a hit here. First hit is um, Facebook, MySpace. We've got photos. Um, and a whole lot of websites I have never seen and maybe didn't even walk. Well, actually, except for the picture of me, which is in the middle, and I don't really want to grab some pictures. Um, no. I don't think any of that is me. <laughs> me, me. Um, so um, there is a real estate agent in Ohio. There are different people using Becky, um, which is why I will probably be doing something like Rebecca, which is also my email address, and then in parentheses going to Becky. Um, another thing that I found through my research is that some companies are hiring groups to research employees. So they will search the public records on top of the Google searches and all of that. And it doesn't take very long to clue in how old you are and, and your different life just through the public records. And they'll do that back seven years, which is convenient if you're hiring and terrifying if you're looking for employment. Yeah. Okay, and we're, we're just about done. So let me show you this one because uh, you were mentioning arrest records, that kind of thing. Uh, well, I Googled good quotes, you know, the Google library, my name, Marcia Dorothy Baker. Um, and for whatever reason, there's this Dorothy Baker out there. She comes up no matter how I search my name, and she must be a criminal because I get criminal search results. I don't know who she is. I'd like you to know. It's not my alias. So anyhow, uh, this, this is what kind of surprised me. I have not seen these first two results ever. When I search myself on my computer, on my network at home, and at work, don't ever get these results. Um, but on um, this particular um, Wi-Fi network I do. Um, here's what I'm hoping that you will see. I'm giving myself a guinea pig. Um, the first result you're going to get is my faculty web page. That's what I want everybody to be seeing. That's me professionally. Next, you're going to see that I'm part of CNU. I want you to know that I'm the current chair of CNU um, as of this afternoon, and then I turn that over. And then, boom, you're getting my LinkedIn profile. That's me in a nutshell professionally. That's what I want people to be seeing. And so that's why uh, professionally I give myself about a B and online management. You're probably not going to find me as a person, just me, you know, friend, that kind of thing, because that one I kind of hide, um, because it's more important online that I'm showing up professionally, so that's there. Um, we are out of time. If you have any questions, um, our contact information is available. Uh, we're online. You can find us. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> please do. You know, we'd love, we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions. Um, I'm using somebody else's computer. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to the right slide. Um, we are here if you, uh, if you have questions about that kind of thing. And uh, please have this conversation at your workplace and with your uh, family and friends and anybody who is a minor so that they know they need to start thinking about their future. Thank you.